Hi everyone. Um, you might wonder why I'm sat here at my computer listening to Ukrainian folk songs. Well, I thought it would be appropriate to introduce um, a little thing I'm doing for a local event. Now, um, you probably, some of you might have seen on Facebook already that um, a lady called Suzanne Smith is running an event, uh, Nest and Dance for Ukraine. There's details about that. And I believe it's on the 1st of July. Um, she was asking for donations from local businesses and so on, so I thought I'll give her some of my um, The Boy with the Saucepan Hat books, which many of you will have seen before. Many of you might already have this, or have bought it, or got hold of a free copy, or seen it through your school. Um, but I decided to give a dozen, so that's 12 books, all wrapped up, ready to go, um, to the event to raise funds for Ukrainian refugees. Uh, f fleeing the terrible war in Ukraine. Um, so that's going to be available at the event on the 1st of July. Uh, there's a big dancing event and um, there's going to be a raffle for prizes as well. So I'm donating some of these prizes. Um, and each one will have a little goodie bag in it with a little mini version of another book I'm working on, Parkgate's Potty Pirates. There's Fish Finger Fred and uh, Another one called Elsie from Chelsea. Um, I know she's from Chelsea, but she came to uh, Merseyside with her fossils and um, a couple of other bits and pieces in there. This is just a little sampler of something I'm working on for the future. So there's that in there. There's also a couple of free Squiggly Pete bookmarks and Squiggly Pete stickers. So if you want to help uh, raise funds for this worthy cause, um, if you uh, I'll, I'll try and put, I'll put it in the link to this video actually where you can find out more information from Suzanne. Um, so that's great. So hopefully you'll uh, you know get along and support that uh, when the time comes. But I thought also, um, I don't know whether you remember a few months back, I think it was back in February when the it, Russia invaded Ukraine. It was tragic, terrible to, to see it unfold on live TV. And um, uh, many of us reacted in the same sort of way, showing our solidarity for the Ukrainian people. Um, I used, took that moment and even though I was watching the news late one evening, I thought, right, I'll scribble some squeak. I know I've got some Squiggly Pete, loyal Squiggly Pete followers. And I thought I'd show my solidarity by whipping together this little sketch, in, a piece in which Squiggly Pete and his crew, Lucy and Jack, change out of their normal pirate costumes into costumes supporting the Ukrainian people. Um, now, I'm going to be doing something a little bit unusual because I don't usually um, give away or sell my artwork because A, I might need it in the future, you know, if I republish the book or do a different edition or something like that, and B, because it's difficult to let go of something you've, you've put a lot of work and effort into, um, and I forget how many hundreds of these pictures I've done. Um, but they, they very rarely sort of get out in the wild, as it were. But as this is a worthy cause, and I don't need these because they won't be appearing in the book like this, um, I'm going to be auctioning these uh, for this charity. So I'm going to be putting it on eBay. I'll send you a link on this post as well. And uh, I'm not sure when I'll close it yet. Uh, it might be the 1st of July or it might just be a seven day auction. I'm not sure, but I'll put the details in the link below. Um, so it'll be this pair of paintings. And I was looking for this one to go with it. Um, because it made a nice little group of three, or a triptych as I believe they call it in art circles. Um, but I can't find that for the life of me. So um, what I'm going to do in this little video is quickly put together something appropriate to go with these two, and then I shall auction them either in individually or maybe you can buy the whole lot, uh, you know, as a triptych, um, on eBay. Right. And let's hope it raises a little bit of money to help this very, very worthy cause. As I said, as I've said elsewhere, my heart really goes out to these Ukrainian children. And um, also, I'm putting together another project, in which case I might get this book, The Boy with the Saucepan Hat, translated into Ukrainian as a sort of welcoming, welcoming gift. And I think some of you have responded already saying, yes, I'm willing to contribute or I'm interested in that. So thanks very much for your interest in that and watch this space. Interesting enough, it's just a coincidence that here, the colours, the font and the background colour I used for this book, which was designed in 2019, um, is perfect. The Ukrainian colours there. So anyway, right, without any further ado, 
I'm going to start scribbling and painting, so please enjoy this little thing. I'll try and keep it as short as possible because I do tend to ramble on. Um, but I hope you like this. And as I said, look out for this event um, run by Suzanne Smith, Neston Dance for Ukraine. It might may go under another title, but there'll be details on Facebook, I'm sure. OK, thanks for watching and enjoy this clip. I, won't, I nearly said bye. I won't say bye. So I go bye. And, oh, there's all coming. So anyway, so there is more coming. So bye for now. Oh, squiggly Pete. Uh -huh. And yes, with his red and white bandana, big squiggly Pete. Yes, with his gold earring. And there he is. Squiggly Pete. Say arg. Scribbling for Ukraine. Right. Okay, so here we go. Um I had this little idea. Um let me just take you back to the beginning. So as I said, um, on the 24th of Feb, in response to the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, um, like many, 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 many people, I was disgusted by this, appalled, uh, deeply upset. Um, and my response was just to scribble a quick squiggly picture and put it on Facebook. So that's what I did. I showed them changing their costumes here from their normal uniform, as it were, to... Uh, Ukraine support dress. Now, as I said, I'm going to put this up for auction on eBay, uh, these two pieces, and I originally wanted to put in a third, but I couldn't find it in my collection. Now, I want to do something which shows um, them in their normal outfits before they get changed to go with this and to make it a three-piece triptych. So this is what they normally wear, um, and I thought what I'd do is record this in real time so you can see the thought process. Now I've had an idea, maybe they're watching this on television, like um, like Boris Johnson in the in the in the thing. <clears throat> um, I thought I'd have the three of them in the in their sort of same those same positions left to right. Now, I know I did this back in February and this one's uh, the 10th of June now. But I think it'll go nicely with them. So it'll be Lucy, Pete and Jack in that order. So I thought it'd be good to have Lucy here, perhaps standing up in disgust at what she's just seen on the telly. So I'll just sketch her out very roughly there like that. Maybe she'll have an arm here pointing at the telly, a head back. And I usually do sort of um, almond shape for the face, sphere for the back of the head and build it from there. So there's her ears, eyes wide in surprise, tiny nose and a shocked mouth. And there's Lucy. Now, to get that expression of exclamation, I'm going to make her hair shoot up like that. So she's saying, oh my goodness. And she'll have a frilly shirt there. And this arm's going to be pointed down. There's the elbow and the hand out and extend that shock expression, thumb there, okay, fingers like this, that arm's going here, there's the frilly collar, the cuffs of her shirt, and there's her legs, and those old pucker tucker boots, I think they used to call them in the 70s, do the other leg there. So here's our composition coming together, you see. And of course, the finger is the most important thing there. Hand. There we go. And the eyelashes also convey that shock. So there's Lucy. And of course, across the bottom here, we'll have um, invades. Ukraine and I think we'll have the Ukrainian flag there right so here you can see the thing building up um, here 
I want to change, I want to join them all together. So Peter's just say got up and he's got his hand on her shoulder. So I'm sort of calculating back where he'll he'll be. He's a little bit taller, so his elbow will be there, shoulders here, like this. He's going to rep replicate this shocked arm again. So I'm putting that in. So that gives us the position of his the upper part of his body. He's leaning back too, like Lucy. So, and this is the side. We'll see his uh, artificial leg there. And on the other side, he's got his boot on. So it'll be something like that. And he's got that high collared coat of his which will be there. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just basically roughing it out. And his hand, similarly, thumb. And I'm going to have Jack looking out at the audience, which engages us too. So a little bit higher again. So Jack's shoulders are going to be here. I don't want to make him look too big. But... And he's quite a plump, sort of stout chap. And he's going to have his hand on um, Pete's shoulder as well. So, as you can see, I often say when I'm drawing these things, I start with the eyes, but sometimes I don't. I sort of calculate, calculate back. And he's got his striped shirt on, because this is all about them. And Jack's going to be, uh, yeah, Jack's going to be looking at us. So basically just a big oval for his face like this. This gives me the position of his eyes there. There we go. Okay, so that's a very rough sort of layout. And what, I, what I'm going to do then is I will photocopy that, darken it, put it on my little white board thing here. Uh, light board, light box, um, and then use that to do the actual pencil or ink. I think I'll just go straight to ink with this because this is a, this is a quick project, um, and then colour it in. So hold on a second while I get the photocopying done. Okay, so here's our original, and here's the same thing photocopied. Um, I've made it as dark as I can from the pencil um, sketch. I've used the photocopier to darken it as much as possible so that it'll show through when I use the light box. Um, I'm using my De La Rowney Aquafine Smooth watercolour paper. Hot press, which means it's smooth, pretty smooth. There's still some texture there and it works nicely with a pen. You see, if I wasn't doing pen in my illustrations, I'd probably use cold press, which has got a lovely texture as well. Okay, uh, £140, 300 GSM. Uh, yes, grams per square metre in case you're interested. Right, so I've got a piece already torn out here. There's our thing. And this is how the light box works. We pop this under here. This is a very thin, it's like half a centimetre, five millimetres or so thin. Sometimes it just sits on the, the desk for days like that. It doesn't get in the way, it's quite useful. Um, but in this case, I'm using it for its intended purpose. There we go, to turn it on. And as you can see, it's not great, great when used with this paper because um, this paper is very thick. Obviously, if I was tracing something else onto a lighter, you know, different paper, it would be perfect. But uh, the watercolour paper is quite thick. I'm going to put it in the centre of the page like that. And I like to sellotape things down to stop things floating about when you're working. So a little bit there, a little bit there. I don't know if I've said this before, but when I first had children, many, many years, well, 22 years ago, uh, one of the things we got for the home uh, art studio, which is also known as the kitchen table dining area, was one of these. And um, I've been using it day in, day out ever since for all for everything crafty we used to do with the kids. And now it's on my desk permanently. It's a must have sort of thing. You don't have to mess around peeling sellotape off with your fingers and stuff. So there we go. Just secure that down a bit. I'll um, lop off the end of that piece here. Again, this this is fantastic. Um, cricket, cri cry cut, cricket. I don't know how you pronounce that. But it's a little desk trimmer. And again, 
bought this probably about five years ago and it's still going strong. Great piece. I use it for 101 things around the office stroke studio. Okay, look, so there's our thing all ready to go. And as you've probably seen before, I've got this weird little thing here which I found, which is perfect. Little bottle with a syringe needle on the end, full of the black Indian ink. And in case you're interested, I'm using this stuff. I have partially diluted it, but you can use it, you know, full strength or not. That's uh, Windsor & Newton uh, black Indian ink with a spider on the front, which I've scribbled all over. But you can see these in any art shop. In fact, the range have them. WH Smith maybe even. OK, so there's that. And this is a Sainsbury's 2 dollars I think it was, or $3.99 cheapo fountain pen. But it works great. Like I said, um, for a couple of years before, I was using these scratchy pens. And while they're very traditional and they can produce a good result, they're not so good for the sort of thing I'm doing here. Right. OK, so off screen, I'm just dipping that. So I dip the nib directly into there like that and this little reservoir holds enough for quite a bit of art uh, drawing so it's quite good now because i've got it all traced out i'm just going to move the junk on my desk because i've got it all traced out i can make quite quick progress on there so here's our tv so that's that so let's get straight on to lucy first of all this is what i usually do when i do inking the eyes as I said Lucy's eyes are wide open in surprise disgust there's a little nose whoops her mouth agape and there we go there's her earrings and uh, Hair goes like this, I believe. Now you've got to be careful when using this ink not to smudge what you've just done. But I think this, on this paper and this fountain pen method, it's not delivering too much ink at a time, so it works quite well. So there's her shirt thing, freely at the front. And there's a uh, arms, cuffs, and her thumb there. Her hand. There's a shirt and this arm up here. Right, and that's pretty much Lucy. Oh yes, eyelashes showing shock as well. And her hair, of course, reflecting that. And legs. Those big clunky boots. I think we all had them back in the 80s called tucker or pucker boots or something sort of soft suede things well, that's lucy's footwear of choice at the moment oh, oh that's lucy done there she is right i'll do pete and i might see if i can fast forward this video uh, so you don't get too bored watching this right so Here's the eye patch eye. And of course, that pencil in his pocket there. And that's Pete done oh, eyebrows raised in shock also 
So there's two of our characters. All we've got to do is Lil Jack. There we go. I think that's it. We need some stripes in his shirt, so I'll just do this upside down because the hand curves around better that way. Right, and there's our little thing, and just to prove it's me, I'll sign it down here. Um, and the date is the 10th of June, 22. Right, and just to prove the others are me too, I'll just sign them. I usually just do MH. That is an H, by the way. Ooh, I smudged it. Ooh, careful. And just sign this one too. So I'm hoping these are going to raise some funds. Don't be stingy. Go and find that wallet. Dust off the moths, etc. etc. Um, right, I'm going to clean this pen quickly. Because otherwise it will clog up with the uh, the ink will actually sort of clog it all up completely. Works well, really quite nicely this method. So uh, hold on a second, let me just pause this while I'm cleaning that. Okay, so there's our finished picture, signed. I've just noticed I've left out a couple of things. I think there's something wrong with Jack. I haven't done his earrings. So I'm just going to do those with a different pen for now, as soon as I've cleaned out the other one. And this one's waterproof as well. It's just not quite as intense as the black ink I usually use. Okay, that's just one of these uh, Mitsubishi uni pen things. It's okay. Right, so there's Jack. And uh, the other's all ready to go. And the, so that was one thing I forgot to do. And the other thing is, I'm just gonna show you an interesting little technique. This is a thing called uh, art masking fluid used by uh, watercolour painters, but probably other people use it for all other things as well. You have to shake it up. Um, and basically what you do, it's like, it's like latex. I believe it's a latex rubber type thing, uh, slightly pigmented, and you use it in watercolours for masking off bits where you don't want the paint to go. And you can create all sorts of wonderful effects in different ways. I'm going to show you something very basic. Because I wanted the word news in here. I would have the BBC colours, the red and the white news. I would have had it down here in Vades Ukraine, but I forgot. So I'm just going to put news. I'm just going to paint the word news. Now, I don't know whether you can see that. I angle the paper there. Can you see the wet? stuff i'm going to clean this brush straight away because this stuff dries very quickly makes water go cloudy fortunately that's not too cloudy i can continue to use that without trotting off to the kitchen again and clean my brush out otherwise it kills absolutely kills brushes right so there we go that's um winter newton uh art masking fluid slightly pigmented anyway and then when we paint over that, I'll show you this later, when we paint over that and the paint dries, we just rub that off and you're left with a nice piece of white paper. Okay, so right, we're ready to paint. So I'll turn off the whiteboard now, white box, we don't need that anymore. I'll leave the piece of paper stuck to the back here because if anything does get wet, you know, if it does get a bit watery here, the tent paper tends to buckle. So sometimes just having the original cheap photocopy behind it helps to absorb some of that moisture and stop it from buckling so it won't bother in this case but uh, right now anyway so um 
I've, I've just got this feeling I'm going to paint in some shadows just to give the ground a bit of substance here. Uh, otherwise, it niggles me that this telly is sort of floating in space. Here's my standard watercolour box, and off screen I've just got some plain water over here. As I said before, this is a Windsor and Newton artist's, I think it was Cotland series, but I've replaced lots of these with Sennelier, which are slightly better quality and very nice to work with. It's a bit of a mess, but that's the way I work. And as I said, these here are virtually completely worn out. Um, I have got some spares ready to go, but it's like a bit of a curiosity thing with me to see whether I finished the Squiggly Peak book with these still there. Anyway, enough about me. So I'm just going to put in some shadows here. Um, I'm going to use shadows similar to what I've done here, just like grey, nondescript colour. We don't need anything there. But it helps just to fix the characters to the ground. Right. If I... If I leave anything out of camera, please just give me a nudge and let me know. I'll try to include it as much as possible. So I think that's okay. Then I have a piece of rough paper here. I always keep something handy just to test dabs, see if that's the right intensity. And it is. That's perfect. So I'm just going to sort of dribble in my colours here. Right, now I've got, while I've got this grey on the go, I think I'll paint left to right. Um, and I'm using Payne's grey up here, which is a lovely, lovely colour. It's not exactly black, but if you use it almost neat, it can be black. But if you use it, as I've done here, it can be any shade of grey. Right, and while I've got the grey on the go, I don't usually do this, as I said, I usually do the flesh colours. Um, I'm just going to dab in the basics of these guys' boots. Like this. Like I said, once you've got your technique worked out, and I've developed a technique which is perfect for doing these cartoon type things, you know, it's not great. My style isn't great for water, water landscapes and stuff, but, you know, like I said, once you've got a technique, this really is like paint by numbers. I know that's sort of easy for me to say. I've been doing this for a few years now. But I'd like to encourage anyone who wants to give it a go, you know, especially these days. When I was a kid, as I say to Sarah many a time, I said, we didn't have the internet in our day, you know. And I said that to my kids as well. We didn't have the internet. Of course, you know, if you want to learn anything, you either learnt it from a tutor and paid for that, or um, were lucky enough to have someone in the family show you, or um, you'd go to the library and get a book, in which case very often they didn't have it. So they'd look it up on the big card index system and then order it from another library which did have it. It was all very complicated. But uh, these days we've got the internet. So... The whole of human knowledge and experience can be shared, which is wonderful in many ways and terrible in others. It's a double-edged sword. My flesh colours, goodness me, this one's wearing out as well. I always start with some light yellow ochre, like that, and then a tiny couple of dabs of this Windsor Red, which is quite powerful stuff. It's really funny, some watercolours, some colours, some pigments really have to work to get the brush hair or something there. Um, you have to work to get the colours out of them. Others you hardly touch, but I suppose that depends on the chemicals they're using and, um, you know, the solvent or whatever it is in their medium. Right, okay, so there's the flesh colour. So basically I'm just going to dab in. I should be using a smaller brush for this, actually. So I'll switch over to that for a minute. But I'm just going to use up the paint I've got on this one. Okay. Right, please tell me if I'm not talking loud enough. I tend to mumble on sometimes to myself and find out later on the video that it's a bit gone a bit weak. Right, on the other hand, sometimes I rabbit on too loud and the video distorts. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, they're very flat. Lucy's still drying, but I'm going to crack on with the other two characters. So I'm just going to whip up a little bit more of that colour. test it that's a little bit too red there you can see that can't you 
I must admit my computer screen is making it look a bit more red than it actually is, but um, I have overdone the red pigment there a bit, so we'll just add more yellow to balance that off, and I think that's probably a bit better. That's better. Looks gone the other way now. That's it. Right, so is Lucy dry yet? Nearly. So I'm going to start with Pete then. Oops. Right. So. Sorry, I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. It looks like there's an issue with the router and Echo device, so try restarting them. Unplug both of them, then plug the router back in. Wait 30 seconds. Once the router is back on and connected to the internet, plug in the Echo device. Sorry about that. She seems to have problems connecting sometimes. Okay. And she doesn't give me any warning. She just butts in. There you go. Such is technology these days, eh? I've messed, messed up Jack's face a bit. I'm hoping we can fix that somehow, somewhere along the way. Anyway. Right. Okay. That's that. Has Lucy dried yet? Just about. So let's try and add some shape to her face as well. And you've got to be very careful when painting women's faces or girls. I'm not exactly sure how old she is, actually, Lucy. Sometimes she looks like a child, sometimes a little bit more like a teenager. Anyway, um, you've got to be careful painting women's faces sometimes because with a little dab of paint, you can give someone a beard. And um, not that there's anything wrong with anyone, any women with beards, if you have them. But uh, it's not what I'm intending to do here. Right, so there we go. And I think with those shadows, that highlights the, that emphasises the shock in her eyes there, you see. Um, Let's do a bit of shadow back here on Jack's arm while we're waiting for that to dry. Add a little bit more back in there. Don't know what I've done to his arm. I'm, I think it's because I'm going too quick. Anyway, there we go. Uh, Pete looks suitably shocked. I'm fine with that. Just going to paint that colour as a undercoat for his mouth. I'll be doing that in sort of ready interior mouth colour, <laughs> whatever you call that, in a minute. So, right, let's quickly crack on. We're all waiting for the bits to dry. I'm going to do Lucy's shirt because that's quick and simple. And I'm using just a dab of, oh goodness, it goes smudging. That's what happens. I need to get my studio set up for this sort of thing better. Dab of Payne's Grey and Windsor Blue up here to give like a light grey-blue colour like that. And I'm just going to dab it around because her, her shirt is supposed to be white, you see. But in real life, if you look at anything, things are never, even a, something white has its shadows. And that's basically how I create the effect of a white shirt. Draw some blue on it, grey and blue. There we go. That's it for her shirt. I'm hoping you can see this in the video. It, it, it's cl clearer to my eye than it is obviously on the telly, on the video. So I'll do it a little bit darker for you so you can see some of those shadows. And that shadow there will help to emphasize the pointing arm and the shock. So there you go. Next, I think I'll crack on try and get Lucy sorted. So she's got sort of, I'm not sure what you call it, I'm not very good at hairstyles, but it, it's like quite dark hair with highlights of bronze in it, I suppose you'd call it. So I start with that as a base coat and that is actually this yellow, light yellow ochre, that's the same as her trousers. 
This is probably why I go through so much of this. Here we are. Like I said, it's a bit like colouring in sometimes. And again, that light yellow ochre is also the base of the gold earrings. So with those, I'll just do a little clip one way and a clip the other way. I always leave a little bit of white for shine and light. Same with Jack. And anything else? I can use this colour? Yes, of course, the chips. It's perfect for chips, see? Oh, it's making me hungry. <laughs> okay, All right, so there we go. Oh, and uh, the brass leg, and I'll leave a little bit of shine on there. Um, oh, and his tunic, his um, coat thing. I forgot to do something there, actually. And there's that colour. Oh, and his cuffs. It's all yellow, light yellow ochre. It's one of my favourite colours. It's a lovely warm golden colour. Reminds me of the sunshine. So there we go. Now, as you can see, Lucy's legs are flat, so I'm going to use some of that light yellow ochre and a bit of the mucky brown I've got hanging around over here. And these colours, you have to, these browns, you have to really work hard to get anything out of them, especially with a tiny brush that I'm using for this stage. Anyway, there we go. That should do. Just test it up there. It's fine. Brings out the contrast. Do some shadows of her shirt there. And then just give a little bit of shape to her legs. Shadows, so on. Helps create the drama. And again, a little, a little dab to give some texture to Pete's garb. Like that, comme ça, as Derek Trotter says. And give him a little yellow tooth, just for fun. That's not actually what I had in mind. I was going to do that, use that paint for something else. It's a little bit too yellow. So just take a little bit off like that. Here we go. Now, I'll use some of that to darken up some of these chips, just to give a bit of texture in there as well. Okie doke. And, um, right, cracking on. Ah, Lucy's hair. Let's darken that up. So I'm working my way now towards the browns in my palette over here. And for some reason, I don't find this very satisfying. Mainly, I think, because you have to work these so much to get any of that actual colour out. Um, it's a little bit annoying when you're trying to work at speed. Anyway, um, now, is that colour? Yeah, that would be, should be good for Jack, actually. So, right, I'm just going to pause this one minute and I'll get the hair going. There we go, sorry about the noise. Right, now, where were we? Okay, so Lucy's hair, yes, that's what I was going to darken off, wasn't I? So, so I still want to have those highlights in it. Just like it a little bit darker like this. There we go. I think that emphasises her shock quite nicely. Right, so on with the show. Just using that to give some contours to Pete's sleeve and that um, collar on his coat. And also the brass. In fact, I'm going to back, add that, use that to give shadow to the back of her legs there as well. There, yeah, that's better. Okie okay, doke, no. right. A little bit of gold earring there. Now, let's see, where are we? So that we can sort of finish off Pete's mouth, just going to get, this is a mixture of reds and purples and stuff up here, which is quite good for a inside of the mouth effect. Like that, there we go. A little bit wet, so to make sure I don't come along and smudge that. So Lucy I think is done apart from the boots so let's get her boots finished. Now, again 
I think I'm using light ochre and those browns as the base for her boots. Sort of goes with her leggings or trousers, whatever you call them. So there we go, just a dab of that. And a dab of this. And while it's still wet, I'm going to add in a little bit of indigo. So that darkens it up nicely, doesn't it? As I said, some of these colours are really responsive. Others you have to really wiggle and jiggle and fight to get the colour out. There we go. So that's how I've added the, the 3D depth, you see, to her legs. Um, right, so I think I'm just going to add a little bit more grey while I'm darkening up that part of her to help define the rest of her up here. As I said, it looks fine really on the paper. I don't know if you can see that on there, on the screen very well. There we go. I think that's okay. A little bit dramatic, but then it's a dramatic moment. I think that's Lucy done, apart from I'm going to just skip forward and do her eyes. And basically what I do is a little bit of, it's almost like blue-grey, to show the, I think, what's the word, aqueous nature of her eyes, eyeballs. I did do A-level human, bi human biology, but that was nearly half a century ago. <laughs> so uh, you have to forgive me on that one. Right. Oh, and the inner parts of her hand here, look. There we go. Just to help bring those fingers out. Stop! One of the things with doing watercolours is sometimes you've got to know when to stop. Do you think, oh, that's good. I'll just do a little bit more there. And just a dab there, and just, and then you've ruined it. So, there we go. I think that's okay. I'm not going to do any more on that, apart from her ear. <laughs> There we go. Oop, nearly gave her a beard. Okie doke. So, onwards and upwards. That's Lucy sorted. Let's do Pete from the top down. Here's a chance to use those luscious orangey reds for his bandana. Now, I usually paint these things. When I do these sketches, I usually paint them probably about 20% bigger than this for the very reason that it allows me some leeway when you're doing details. I don't want to spend hours and hours painting little tiny details and then getting upset because I go outside the lines. But that's exactly what happens when you paint the, the real size like this. That's what I've just done. But uh, never mind. That's part of the fun, isn't it? See, that lovely red brings the thing alive, doesn't it? And, of course, we're going to get loads more of that red in Jack in a minute. And, uh, see, when I first set out to design these characters, I gave it a fair amount of thought. I wouldn't say I gave it a lot of thought, but um, quite a bit of thought. And um, I thought about, you know, how colourful it's going to be on the finished page. Uh, you know, it's a children's book at the end of the day, and you've got to make sure it's entertaining to the kids. I can never remember the order of the sequence of the colours. Red, black, white. Let's go for red, black, white. So that'll be red, black, white, red. I, I know for a fact, if you analysed all the paintings I've done, red, black, white, you'll probably find half of them are one sequence and half of another sequence. Red, black, white, red. But, you know, that's artistic licence, isn't it? Red, black, white, and finish with a red. The key thing with um, Jack's shirt is I always try to finish with red at the bottom. Black might make it a bit too heavy, and white just wouldn't look right. So that one's got to be red. That sleeve's red, that's fine. Uh, red, black, white. Yes, sorry. okay, so that's fine. Doesn't look right at the moment. But it will, don't worry. OK, I can hear you need more convincing. So I'd better go and crack on with um, putting in the black, hadn't I? And as I said, for black, I don't actually use black. I'm using Payne's Grey over here, which is almost black, if you want it to be. But can also be any other grey under the sun. So let's start from the top down and do his 
Jack's bandana. Now, I'm going to say, I don't want to sound arrogant, but I'm going to say, you know, anyone watching this, if you put your mind to this, you can do this as well. As you can see, it's I have a certain formula to, you know, to, to, to do this myself. And if you apply the same sorts of formulas, learn to draw a bit, uh, there's no reason you can't do this and have a lot of fun. Whether you're young or old, you're young and learning a life skill, or you're older, you're retired and you want something to do in your spare time, or even if you want to make a living out of it. Um, you know, fortunately these days you can. When I was a kid, as I say, we didn't have the internet, and there wasn't the outlet for all these creative things. You know, you couldn't set up a YouTube channel, become an influencer, and get bombarded with sponsorship and stuff, and whatever business model they've got. You, you know, you had to do the job that was you were told to do in the first place by your mum and dad. My career's advisors at sixth form were terrible. I desperately wanted to do music. No, they said, despite the fact that I was a pretty good violinist and um, was passionate about classical music and everything else, folk rock, you name it, I played it. Um, they sent me off to do combined science, which I hated. I mean, yes, I'm interested in science, but, you know, did I want to do a degree in it? Not really. I think there's a, not that there's anything wrong with science, of course, you know, we need it. But, um, you know, I want to be a musician. Eventually, I got, got to go back to university a few years later and studied composition, which is wonderful. Got to play violin a lot, piano as well, and had some great performances of some of my pieces. And that all seems a very long time ago, and then I strangely got sidetracked into computer programming and web design so red black and again I mean you know that satisfied my curiosity that as I say to many people there's a lot about computer programming that satisfies the same parts of the brain that composing does you know and that, as many people will know I've done something wrong here red black white oh well <laughs> he's got an extra stripe red black white yeah so I'm gonna have to fudge this a bit um, yeah and you know those of you who are musicians will know music can sometimes be very mathematical you know that and especially modern composition there are composers who have all sorts of mathematical uh, principles um, theories and so on to wrap their music around and of course harmony by Bach Mozart and stuff you know, there are regular rules you should, could, should, and usually did stick to until you broke them. Right, something odd going on there. Okie doke. So, now, so that's all Payne's Grey, and I'm now going to add some of the deeper shadows on Jack's shirt there with some almost neat. Oh, that's still a bit wet. I'm going a bit too fast, but never mind. Some almost neat paint there. I'll come back and finish those once things have dried up a bit. I'm just going to add a little dab of that around Pete's beard to emphasize. There we go. Bring his beard out a bit. Um, do I need it anywhere else? Not for a minute. Now, as I'm working my way down from the top, I'm just going to do that same little dab of grey blue to Pete and Jack's eyes, which will give them some depth. There we go. And make some pop out a bit. While I'm waiting for Jack to dry, I'm just going to nip over and do uh, Peter's jacket. I think I'm using Windsor Blue for that. Lovely, rich, deep blue. Again, I'm sorry you can't see this so well on the computer screen. I'm going to have to think about doing some more advanced lighting, I think, for my videos, because, you know, at the end of the day, doing videos in which people want to see the colours, it's quite important to get that bit right, isn't it? Yeah.
some colours are more satisfying to work with than others. For example, I do enjoy doing the blue, but then blue is one of my favourite, well, if not my favourite colour, actually, purely because I love the seaside so much. And all the different colours you get in water. And the sky. So there we go. So now, so that's wind, that's plain Windsor blue up there. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of indigo again, which has nearly run out, which is really dark blue. And that really deepens those shadows very quickly. There you are, see? And as I've said elsewhere, it's really good fun sometimes painting the clothes on my characters because it's just interesting to see the way the paint sometimes does its almost does its own thing it can enhance and help you out with what it's doing and sometimes you make a bit of a bodge and you end up having the wrong sort of thing but there we go i'm just gonna put the shadow around his the collar of his jacket there a minute and i think that's pretty much it right uh so let's does take a bit longer than I hoped, but never mind. Now, uh, let's get in those purple trousers. But before that, I'm going to add in the lemon yellow, which is supposed to be like a silver thread, silver gold thread running through his trousers. Whoops, come out a bit green this one, but never mind. It shouldn't look so green once we get the purple on there. I'm going to give that a little bit of extra colour with that yellow ochre again. Right, so as you can see, we're nearly finished. Now, when I'm working like this, sometimes you take a break and you say, right, I'll let that dry. But in this case, I'm working where one area is drying, I'm working on something else just to try to get it done more quickly. Um, but we're nearly there. So I'm going to come back and do his trousers in a minute and also the shadows. Now, I'll do the shadows on Jack's shirt now because that's nice and dry. Now, sometimes you've got to bite the bullet with this sort of thing um, and just sort of go for it. So what I'm going to do with the shadows on his shirt, I'm going to use a blue, maybe with a bit of mauve in it, like that. So it's that sort of colour. I hope you can see that. Um, so it's cooler colours. I'm just going to do the shadow on the side away from the TV. Whoops. One dab too many there. That's fine. I've done other pictures actually in, with TVs in them, uh, including another book I'm working on. Oh dear, whoops. Another book I'm working on called uh, Uncle Jack and the Bumblebee. And there's actually a reading of that on SoundCloud if you want to hear one of my little poems, uh, narrative poems, stories about a boy who opens a window to let out a fly. And just as he lets out the fly, a bumblebee comes in and buzzes round. Then after the bumblebee in came a bird. And the whole thing turned out to be pretty absurd. But it's a fun sort of poem. And maybe I should read these on Facebook as well. Um, one thing I'm going to be doing soon is releasing some poems because I've been going under the name Martin Harvey the Poet which is a nom de plume I gave myself when I started doing stuff for children's books and so on. And I, I've released very little of my actual poetry. So that's something I'm going to be doing soon as well. So look out for that. There we are. A little bit of shadow to emphasise the shock in Jack's eyes. And just some nondescript sort of shadows over that side from Peter's body. There we are. And you see how you're sort of building up the effect of depth and using those colours to enhance. Let's get some of that purple into his mouth there to help that out a bit. There we are, that's a bit better. Uh, now, purple, I hope the stripes on his legs dried. Yes, I believe they have. So we're just going to use some lovely Windsor Mauve and violet, there we are, a little bit of space over there on the palette. So there we go. 
that's another satisfying colour to work with. It's a lovely richness to it there. I have to keep telling myself, Martin, don't overdo it. Know when to stop. There we go. That's some lovely purple colours. Right, so I'm going to call them just about done. Um, I'm not going to colour in the chips. Uh, the chip box. I'm going to leave that there just for sort of dramatic effect as if it's sort of unfinished. But one thing I am doing, I'm just going to, going to do, is just darken off some of those chips. Again, just to add a little bit of depth in that area. That's enough. There. Okay. So that's that. And I think then all we've got to finish off is the telly. Have I missed anything else? I don't think so. Right. Now, as I said, um, I'm going to do red, like a BBC, their standard red branding. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the Pantone colour is or anything like that. I'm just going to make a nice authoritative red there. Put that across the top. And in a minute, I'm going to reveal the word news by rubbing off that. And um, I'm going to put the red down here as well. Okay, I haven't designed that TV screen too well, but you get the idea. So I'm going to put the rest of the screen around that grey. Um, I should be waiting for that to dry really because that's going to run. Just give me a second, I'll just run the hairdryer over this. Careful. Oops. <laughs> he says bodging it up again. Right, now the only thing we need to do to finish this whole thing off I think is to put in the Ukrainian flag. And without having planned it that way I think that's a very, very opportune way of finishing this little painting. So give me one second to dry that off. Right, sorry about the noise. Now, I think, as I said, quite opportune moment. Let's take, is that dry? Yes, that's dry. So I'm going to, you can see the word news peeling through, uh, showing through there. But what I'm going to do, there we go, see? Just rub away that rubbery stuff. There you go, news. Now, the Ukrainian flag As I said at the beginning of this, this is for a very, very worthy cause. You know, at the end of the day, we're thinking about those children who have been, who have lost family, lost mothers, fathers, siblings, grandparents, been uprooted from their home, had their lives shattered, shattered on the whim of one person. Terribly sad. And so I'm hoping you're going to dig into your pockets, ladies and gentlemen. And show the world that Parkgate cares, Parkgate and Neston. Okay, so that's what we're going to put on eBay later for auction. And um, as I said, with the other two paintings in the series, so this is sort of before. This is this is when they hear the news. This is when they get changed, and this is them in their new costumes. So all three of these are going to be auctioned on eBay. I hope we're going to earn hopefully a few hundred pounds at least and that's going to be donated to the local Ukrainian refugee uh, scheme. I'll need to check the details of that and put that in the post later as well. Okay ladies and gentlemen thanks very much for watching hope you enjoyed that get out that card and donate thank you for watching bye
My name is Squiggly Peter, and I loves my fish and chips. I love that salt and vinegar, what dribbles down me lips. And when I'm out there pirating, my pencil in my hand, I draw myself whatever I need or whatever comes to hand. Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, 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 Pete